Hey guys, how's it going? So today I am going to do a review of a game called Land of the Vikings. I did do a first impressions review of the game about a year ago when the game was still in early access. But uh, now the game is fully released. It's in a fully released um, state. So uh, as I often do with uh, games that have been in early access, I then also check out the fully released game if I can. So today we are going to do that. And uh, as always with all of my review videos, I'm going to be playing the game for an hour or more. I'm going to give you my running commentary as we play through the game. Uh, if you are in a hurry, you can simply skip to the last 10 minutes or so of the video where I will give you my quick, concise, final opinion on the game. But uh, yeah, otherwise you can just stay tuned and I will be playing through the game, giving my uh, opinion and telling you what in my opinion is good or bad about the game as we play through the game. Um, one thing that I did notice is that um, since the uh, previous release, what's this, turn a fallen viking community into a glorious one again, uh, immersive mode. Okay, well, I don't know what immersive mode. Like, they don't really give you any information. So, like, it says immersive mode, but it doesn't say what it is. You can choose the maps. That's one uh, criticism that I had of the game when it was still in an access. They allow you to choose the map. Oh, okay, there we go. Now you can hover over the map but they still don't show you the actual map so like they don't show you how big the map is they don't actually tell you how big the map is so they say their map size big and then their map size big map size big very big very big very big small big so like they they say the size but they don't actually say the size. They also don't give you a view of the map, meaning from the top. Like they should do a top-down map view so that you can see where are the mountains, where are the rivers, how much water does the map have, all of that kind of stuff. And they don't do any of that. And then they also don't actually tell you how big the map is. Like they should tell you the map is... 500 by 500 or 700 by 700 or a thousand by a thousand you know squares or, or whatever um, metric the game uses they don't do that either so they actually give you very little um, information regarding the map and that's one of the criticisms that i had of the game back in early access as well so i have no idea what immersive mode is the game also doesn't tell you what immersive mode is i also didn't like the scene transitions um it, it just wastes your time so it would be fantastic if they actually told you what this is but um like i said they they don't do that by the way the the fact that um the uh, music falls away when you alt tab uh, that still has not been fixed so that's another thing that hasn't been fixed they don't allow you to uh, have music or or the in-game sound if you alt tab or anything like that so that's another issue so I don't know what immersive mode is. I do know, know what free play mode is. Free play mode is basically like a sandbox mode. So I believe that was the mode that I selected last time that I played. So uh, let's do that again. And uh, I can't really remember which mode I selected last time, to be honest. Map resources low. Also, you can't customize it. Like... 
what if you want this map that has very big but you want more resources on the map that they don't allow you to do that like they say map resources low resource distance far so obviously this mode uh, this map is going to be a little bit challenging because it doesn't have a lot of resources uh, they don't allow you to customize the map in any way shape or form which is not good in a free play or sandbox mode um so that's that's not good let me just have a look here which one i would like that one is small with high okay so map resources high literally just one map as map resources high all of the other ones um have normal map resources or low map resources let's take this one and then village name so uh, so far several things that unfortunately have seen absolutely no changes that's not good like obviously after not having played the game for a year you would hope that several things hopefully everything has improved but that is very often not the case so you would at least hope that several things have improved you know um but so far it seems nothing has improved when i did my uh first impressions review of the game um i said at the end of the video that the game is gonna take like two years to hopefully be in a playable state and now not even a year later the game's already released so uh, either i was mistaken on the amount of time that the game would need to become playable or the game developers are just very good and the game developers just really really improved the game a lot in less than a year's time so let us see who is correct the developers or me let's see by the end of the video hopefully we will know so uh, last time the uh, tutorial was really bad um, that was one of my biggest criticisms about the game the tutorial was really bad uh, cutting trees okay that's understandable gathering stone that's fine uh, construction demolishing resources inside may also be damaged okay and then a road management that's fine speed controls the game had that as well last time day and night cycles let's see one of my criticisms was that you move across the map very 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 slowly so let's see so first off i still don't see a mute game audio when focus lost button that was one of my criticisms it should actually be right here in the sound settings because when you lose game audio like this for instance now there's no game audio so it seems they still have not fixed that at all uh let's see here mouse control speed camera speed let's see does that make a difference okay that does make a difference but we are going to have to turn that up all the way then because that is still too slow in my opinion so now the camera speed is at maximum i mean that's that's okay but still if you want to go from let's say 
this side of the map it takes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten seconds just to move from one side of the map to another side of the map by the way we should be pausing the game so that's not good like you can't take 10 seconds like each and every time that you want to go from one side of the map to the other side of the map you're gonna waste around 10 seconds and it just that that can't happen like you're gonna waste minutes and minutes and minutes of the player's time just because it takes so long to move from one side of another of the map to another side the game still doesn't have a map i'm pressing m so there's no map so normally what you you can do in these types of games like city skylines or um far farthest frontier anything like that you can move out you can zoom out fully and then the, the game goes to like a top-down system where you can then see the entire map and then you can zoom in on the area that you want so you can you can zoom out over here and then you can just go boom over to the other side and zoom in again and that will allow you to um, move from one side to another side very quickly and the game doesn't allow you to do that and the game doesn't have a map still that was one of my criticisms that I had previously. The game has no map. Uh, turn the camera. That's fine. Uh, advanced controls. Zoom in and out. Do that. Alt shift. Oh, you see now that is an improvement. I don't think that's something that they had previously. So now. Let's see. It takes one two three four five six so it takes six seconds now so now they're only wasting six seconds of your life not 10 seconds of your life so that's an improvement but still it is still wasted time you should be able to go from one side of the map to another side of the map in two seconds like if you had a map if you could just literally press m on your keyboard or anything like that and boom jump and then select on your map where you want to go it would take a second second and a half and uh, like i say six seconds is still too much so it's an improvement i don't think the game had this the shift shift movement in the game previously that is an improvement but still they only reduced the time it takes to move across the map from 10 seconds to six seconds not really um it's still not where it needs to be you know you need to be able to move like if you take uh, city skylines for instance literally two seconds you can move from one side of the map to another side of the map in two seconds that's how it's supposed to be you know even in a game like age of empires or settlers or anything like that you literally just click on the map the mini map and then you are taken to that location in this game you can't do that because you have no map um so no more tutorials apparently let's see if the game has any more tutorials because the game back when i played it the tutorial system was just abysmal uh so we have some objectives over here gather wood gather stone so yeah it had these it did have these um messages i do remember that and let's chop down these trees that are close to our village. Create a little bit of space. And then uh, the rocks. Okay, and then we want to do building, assign a job, assign a worker as a carpenter, activate working in working in the carpenter. Okay, where's the carpenter? So that's a house. Carpenter. So we select someone. 
Um, okay, talents is power. So we want someone with a lot of power. That guy is 2.1. That guy is 1.9, but he has a lot of movement speed. Uh, let's take that guy, why not? Or it's a girl at least. And then activate working. There we go. Nope, apparently not. Okay, there we go. By the way, there's no tutorial for any of this. They just tell you to do this, but there's no tutorial for any of this. You need to figure out for yourself how to assign the worker and open the shop up. Um, so, yeah. They uh, have wood, stone, timber, build a marketplace. Okay, we can't build a marketplace right now, I don't think. We don't have the resources, I don't think. Uh, after selecting a building, you can change the direction with Z. Uh, after all necessary, da -da -da. yeah, that's fine. So... How do you rotate it? I know with Z, but they also said with a oh okay Z and then with a the mouse I guess. They also don't tell you what these points do, like at the bottom and at the top. They don't tell you what the points actually do. By the way, we should probably know. We should probably build a road first. The road system was really broken uh, the last time. So <coughs> let's see if the road system is any bigger now, uh, any better now. So this is another thing I didn't like. When you right click, you just want to remove the point from that point. You don't want to completely quit out of the road building completely. And yet it kicks you out of the road building completely. snapping is also not correct like it snaps from there to there like I don't want it to snap to there I just want to snap it against the building not not over fucking there so that means what you have to do look at that it snaps all the way from here to there I move my mouse a millimeter and it snaps to there that's not what I want The road building system is still really, really obtuse. And I have to quit again. Okay, it's a raid for some reason. Let's try that again. Don't want it to curve, so you have to cancel. Go over there again. So we are busy making wood over here. 
and then we're busy chopping down obviously another thing that i didn't like is even if you zoom out like this whenever you click on a building zoops it immediately completely zooms in on the building like that's something that i really didn't like so um, each time you have to completely reset your um your view you know back to what it was so if you like playing the game at this distance anytime you click on any building like this choops it jumps back and then you have to zoom out all the way and then click on that building choops jumps back right over there then you have to zoom out again and there's nothing you can do about it so that's a really fucking irritating like i like around this level around this level it gives you enough of an overview of everything that you need to do but then you click on something boom jumps right back there and then you have to zoom out again like it's really not good it makes the game annoying like clicking on buildings you're literally gonna avoid clicking on buildings when really that shouldn't be the case you should not avoid doing anything in the game I, um while we are busy oh no wait i needed to place a um marketplace Why is that one showing red? Okay, there we go. Now it's not showing red anymore. Now it's showing red. Like the red should go away. Why isn't it? Like why why is it still red? Look at that. It's still showing oh, there we go. So it's either a visual glitch or an actual glitch because it should not stay red like that so now if i place the marketplace right here it is obviously affecting all of the buildings that have a white outline around them but you don't know if the red building is going to be affected or not you don't know right now if i place it right here you don't know if it's just a visual glitch or if it's going to be an actual glitch like if i place the marketplace right here will this building actually be affected by the marketplace or not you know let's test it let's take put it right here it's showing as red so let's put it right there so according to the game the indication of the red this building is not going to be affected by the marketplace but if it's just a visual glitch then obviously it will be affected by the marketplace so we will just have to see you see this is something that really pissed me off about the game when it was in early access placing roads is really obtuse extremely obtuse there we go like you have to, i i had to reset that road four times before i got the position correct like it is a really really obtuse uh system for road building and it doesn't just affect the roads it affects the buildings as well so that's another thing that they still haven't um fixed another thing that i didn't like about the game the last time i played it was i'm not sure can we build a uh, mine yet let's have a look mines oh there's the mine yeah, I can't build the mine yet. Uh, but the, the thing was mines. If you build a mine or you try to build a mine, there's uh, literally just like one or two places on the entire map that you can build a mine. So like 
the map is is pretty big i mean it's not massive but it, it's pretty big you know and there's literally just one or two places that you can build a mine like it's insane that that is actually a thing so let's say the the place is over here let's say the 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 place is here you then have to carry the resources all the fucking way here here down here all the way all the way over here like it is insane to have a uh, such limited places where you can get certain resources like I don't mind if there's maybe five or six different places where you can get a certain resource you know on it depends on the size of the map by the way look at that visual glitch right there that doesn't look nice at all but anyway um it's okay if there's like five or six places where you can get a certain resource but one or two places is is insane like you you can't can't be that limited on a map to the, the the resources that you can get like here probably this is going to be one location where you can put a coal mine or something like that that's not insanely far away like like it, it it's quite far away but it's not insanely far away but still that that can't be the only bloody location on the entire map okay here's another one that looks the same so there's two locations that's a different resource probably i don't see any more of those black black mountain places so those are then literally the only two places on the entire map where you can get that specific resource and that was one of my criticisms like it, it you can't limit the game resources that much like it's it's a little bit crazy okay so um let's uh pump up the volume a little bit here so that they can um get stuff done we literally just have to wait now until they've built the marketplace Oh, assign a boulder. How do we do that? Assign a boulder. Uh, you see now. Villagers. Families. Villagers. Warriors. Heroes. Villagers. Okay, you can't move this. so you can't move this at all which is irritating um, and you can't assign a job here it doesn't look like I'm clicking so you can't even select your villagers from here which obviously is stupid um, I don't know how to assign a boulder. Do we have to click on this place or what? Oh, there we go, boulders. Why would the boulders even be set to zero? Like, why... What's the logic to... setting a construction project to zero? Like, that is just obtuse. So now each and every building that you place, like let's say you place 10 houses, you have to click on the house, assign a boulder. 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 Like, fucking hell, that is obtuse. There's no need to do that. By default, every place should have one boulder assigned like it's it's just really really obtuse 
Uh, so this place, even though we've been, uh, we've had it for a while, and we fast forwarded for a while, no, no progress have been made on this because we haven't assigned a boulder. And then, obviously, like I said, they don't um, tell you how to assign a boulder. The tutorial in the game is abysmal. Really, really abysmal. It seems that after a year, the uh, the uh, tutorial still has not been improved. I mean, literally, we are done with the tutorial. Literally, the tutorial was at the beginning telling you what all of these do, and then telling you, hey, by the way, over here is a panel where you can um, do various things, various management tasks. And then the whole thing here at the bottom where like up, down, left, right, zoom in and out, rotate your camera, and that's it. That That's the entire tutorial. So we are completely done with the tutorial now. Like that's... That's really bad. Really, really bad. Uh, are my houses full, by the way? Okay, yeah, all of my houses are full, it looks like. We have 21 people and seemingly only enough space for 18 people, maybe? So we should probably build a house. What's the difference between these two houses? This one uses two pre-materials, this one uses three ch three pre-materials. And it says exactly the same thing, except this one says cheap, uh, bad conditions. This one says cheap construction. And then this one says robust, blah, 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 blah. But it uses almost three times the pre-materials. But okay, let's build one of these then. Okay, there we go. Oh, and then we need to assign a bolt. Okay, no, that's already signed over there. Okay. And then over here, we need to assign a marketer. So speed, apparently, is a, an important aspect. By the way, they also don't tell you about the um, important aspects. You just have to know that you have to look over here and then choose the, re the uh, worker with the most of that specific um, aspect. So they, they don't tell you anything regarding how to efficiently select resources, uh, uh, workers and assign the workers. Um, okay, gatherer, build a gatherer's hut, assign a gatherer. Okay, let's see, let's pause. Gatherer. Gatherer. Okay, so what? Uh, the, 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 the forest areas with a lot of bushes, okay. Well, this place doesn't have a lot of bushes or forest area, but it's bloody 87. So what's the difference between this place that has 12% and this place that has 100%? Like, what's the difference? Okay, so those over there, those things over there clearly affect it. So we go from 12% to 37% just because we have a couple of those bushes in the vicinity. That's another thing you have to, you have to figure out for yourself. You just have to figure out that um, you need uh, to get certain resources in the range in order for the place to be more efficient. 
they don't tell you that at all. Uh, it, they also don't show you what resources, like if the developers, um, I don't want to say had any brains, but if the developers wanted to make the game have some good quality of life features, then you should see those um, bushes uh, in a different color. When you when you bring the thing close, they should be like white or yellow or just highlighted in some way, shape or form. Like these rocks, for instance. Like they should almost be like the rocks. Like you bring the thing closer and then they have a highlight around them. Like that, that that's what's supposed to happen over here. And yet none of that is happening. Like there, these trees just turned white for some reason. Like, that is the kind of thing that is supposed to happen with the appropriate resources. Like, obviously, these bushes are um, the resources that this, this gatherer needs. Because over here, there's literally zero. So, nothing here is giving you any, any benefit. Same over here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Zero percent. And then over here, 100%. So you just have to figure out for yourself that the uh, pushes are what m makes your um, gatherers have um, more efficiency and obviously if you place it where there's zero efficiency i don't think you're gonna gain any benefit whatsoever from that building okay two builders two builders two builders okay that's fine we have 21 population so i think two builders is is okay that's already 10 percent of our workforce so let's increase it a little bit let's dig these over here okay now those apparently don't want to be dug what are they so we can't even click on it we can't even click on this Literally, you can hear me clicking. I think that's a uh, criticism that I had of the game as well last time. I can't remember all of my criticisms because it has been like a year. But you can't literally, you can't click and drag. You can't select the resources, these bushes, the animals, the trees. Literally, you can't select any of the resources in the entire game. You can't look at them. You can't see what they will yield. You know, the yield amount. Um, nothing like that. Uh, it's it's bad. Like, the, the amount of re uh, information in this game that the player is not given is just crazy. Like, there's so much information that you are not given. Okay, so those are being built. I remember some of the uh, other criticisms that I had of the game. I think was the resolution. We can actually test that to see if it has improved at all. So... If we look over a year, for instance, something that has a nice, nice texture. So we can look at that and I can actually also open my graphical monitoring software to see as well what the power usage is. Let me just have a look here. And just one second. Okay, so right now we are at 152, 150 power usage. You basically just want to look at power usage. Since power usage is directly correlated to the um, 
uh, amount of graphical power that the game is consuming. So we are at 150 um, usage. Then what we are going to do is we are going to change the resolution to something lower. So we are going to go from 2K resolution to 1K resolution. And we are going to save. And absolutely no change. In fact, the uh, power usage went up actually. Uh, but that might just be variance. Obviously, the game does have a day-night day, cycle, um, which changes the graphical um, requirement of the game, obviously. So 1080p doesn't do anything. Let's go down to... What's the lowest we can go? Okay, so we don't have 480p or 360p. It seems the lowest we can possibly go is that one over there. Uh, let's put it on 720p. 720p is a fine resolution. So 720p, save, and nothing happened. So my suspicion is correct. The developers still have not um, changed the or fixed the resolution at all. So. Uh, even when changing the resolution of the game from 720p to 6k resolution, my card can literally handle 6k resolution. Right now we're running at it at 6k, not even 4k, we're running, running it at 6k and there's no changes. No changes at all. You would literally see the power usage jump from whatever, 100 watts to 300 watts immediately if we were actually running the game at 6K resolution. So, uh, yeah, the graph, the um, resolution in the game is completely broken. So that still has not been... Uh, fixed. So quite honestly, I don't know um, what the game is running at right now. Um, I would assume that the game simply has defaulted to my desktop resolution, uh, which is 4K resolution. So I, I think the game is running at 4K resolution right now. But there's no real way to know because changing the resolution in the game doesn't do anything. So that's another thing that still has not been fixed in a year uh, since I have played the game that still hasn't been fixed. Uh, what's this over here? Newcomers. Okay, that's fine. And then you... Okay, you don't have anything yet, but we haven't gathered any any berries or anything like that yet, so that's understandable that you don't have any food yet. I don't know how my village is surviving without food. I'm not really certain, but anyway. Um, as far as I can remember, the last time that I played the game, a couple of my villagers actually died. Literally, like, I was just busy playing the game and a couple of them died from um, not having food, and then I also commented on the fact that the developers give you so little food um, at the beginning of the game, like, it should not really be possible for your, your, um, your villagers to starve, you know, to die from starvation, like, I, I barely, I haven't even finished the beginning objectives, like literally, like right now, I've been doing the objectives immediately when they pop up, build a house, build a marketplace, uh, build a uh, gatherer, in fact, I've built two gatherers, you know, I'm busy building two gatherers, so I've literally done exactly what the game has told me, and yet my villagers still died of starvation, you know, which 
like I like I say um, happened at the previous time so it should not happen you know it should not be possible to to happen um, but yeah let's see if that uh, has been fixed now I still have 20 wood but um, we might as well collect some more wood collect this over here uh, we can't increase the size of this thing unfortunately it literally stays the same so what I would have liked to do is perhaps like click and drag you know click and drag an area of resources whether it be trees or rocks or whatever but the game doesn't allow you to do that so that's another issue to be honest what's this over here Resources that are lying on the ground may be lost if they are not transferred to a warehouse or storage. But are these my resources? Okay, well I can't I can't select them. So they say that the resources will be lost, but they don't say when the resources will be lost. So in a lot of games that use this um shitty degrading mechanic like i don't like this degrading mechanic but anyway in a lot of games that use the shitty degrading mechanic you can at least click on the resources and then see when the degrading will happen you know how far through the degrading um process the the resources actually are but in this game you can't even do that so that's really bad. I also find it really hilarious that that these were rocks. Literally, these rocks were like this rock over here. And simply through the process of breaking those resources down, you know, simply through the process of breaking the bigger rocks into smaller ro rocks, now all of a sudden the rocks are sus susceptible to degradation, which I just find hilarious. Like... These rocks have been on the planet for millions and millions and millions of years, but now simply because they have been broken down from big rocks into still basically human sized uh, rocks, now all of a sudden they will degrade in just a couple of days or whatever, you know? That doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make logical sense. Um, so that's an issue and then on top of that like i said i do not like games that use this mechanic that use a resource degradation mechanic i i simply don't like it it does make sense in a lot of the cases like i can understand food you know food degradation no problem i can totally understand that even though i don't like it i can understand it but rocks and timber and shit like that degrading come on that's that's not logical in the slightest um so okay let's speed up the game a little bit this st thing still needs wood Chop down some more trees. It's also really stupid that they don't tell you. Um, okay, sure, join. Uh, trees that have been cut down will sprout again unless a building is constructed in that area. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's also really stupid that they don't tell you how much uh, wood a specific tree is going to uh, give you. Not just trees, like even the rocks, you know. Clearly all of the rocks won't give the same amount of resources. A, a, a cow will not give you the same resources as a, a little deer, for instance, you know. Like, but when... You, when you click on the deer or click on the 
uh, cow, you can't even see that. And it's exactly the same with the trees. This fucking tree over here is not going to give the same resources as this tree over here. And yet, the game doesn't tell you that. You literally, you aren't shown any information regarding any of the resources and then obviously like i said you aren't given the information regarding the degradation so it's possible that these these rocks will disappear in a day or two i i just don't know because you aren't given that information um okay so here we need speed and luck that guy is pretty lucky and speedy there you go we want someone else as well, who is lucky and speedy. What's that mean? Like, I can't even see what that means. They don't tell you what, what that means. Uh, that guy is 1.9 and 1. That's not too bad. We can take that one. So now that I have new new people, my population went from 21 to 26, so I probably need more houses then. Probably. Uh, let's see. Like... I don't want the road to be built on the left fucking side, and yet this thing constantly defaults to the left side, even though it's clearly not my intention to have it over to that side. I want it to be facing the front, and it's still defaulting to the side. Really irritating. Uh, let's build two houses, because... Um, then we are ready for the next group of people that will be joining us as well. There we go. And the two builders are assigned over there. That's fine. Also, another thing that um, I really wasn't a fan of the last time I played was all of these different uh traits um the game doesn't allow you to select your villagers at the beginning a lot of games will allow you to select your villagers so then you can make sure that you don't randomly get fucked over by um a lot of your villagers having the same traits you know but um you can't do that in this game at all so you just have to take the um, traits that uh, are given to you, to be honest. And also, like, some of them have more um, traits than others, and some of them have bad traits, like this guy has lazy trait, you know? So, um, it's quite possible that you get fucked over by RNG, and you get a bunch of villagers that just have very shitty traits, or very few traits, where as uh, if you just restarted the game constantly, uh, you know, did like a, a save scum almost, until you get a good batch of, of um, villagers, then you would be in a far superior position than what you would be if you didn't do that, you know. So like this one is stupid, so it has far less uh, intelligence, and then uh, it has one good trait. So, one bad trait, one good trait, this worker is essentially useless. So, I don't like that, you know. I, I like to be able to select my... Um, my traits and my villagers and all of that kind of stuff, so that you can be assured that your village will run efficiently, because the alternative to that is just save scumming, you know. And any time that... The best option in a game is saves coming any time that that is true, you know, any time that you, you would be in a superior position by saves coming, 
that means the developers fucked up you know that means that the developers have dropped the ball and not designed the game in a good way because safe scumming should never be the best option you know safe scumming should never give you the best start in the game which is why i say they should rather just let you select your villagers let you choose the start of your villagers it's the same with a lot of games that give you a random start in the game I don't think this game gives you a random start. I think this game always will start you on this location if you choose this map. I, I don't know. I, I haven't tested this, but I think this game doesn't have random starts. But in games that do have random starts, that's another thing. Like, save scumming is a big thing in those types of games because you get a vastly better start in your game if you are close to certain resources in certain games you know you could potentially be in an area that doesn't have fresh water you could potentially be an area that um, uh, doesn't have a lot of wood or doesn't have gold or stuff like that like for instance in uh, age of empires which i i played a lot when i was young um, saves coming in that game was very big because the maps were randomly generated in a lot of the cases and if you had gold which was a very important resource in Age of Empires if you had gold be very very far from your your starting area then you simply restart you know you just save scum until you find a location that is nice you know you have a lot of stone you have, have a lot of gold you have a lot of berry bushes around your place then you're happy and that's not good you know safe scumming isn't good and unfortunately in this game if you really want the the the, the best start of your game and and it's not just the start the 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 traits that your villagers have will affect you throughout your entire game so like this fucking guy is crippled and stupid so this guy has a double dose of of badness you know um and if you are unlucky enough to get multiples of this moron then your village is not going to perform anywhere close to as good as what it would if you did saves coming you know so the devs should allow you to choose your your starting um village and all of that kind of stuff you know uh so yeah quite honestly i've not seen a single thing that has changed yet uh while digging construction looked carefully realized it was full of silver it would be the best to leave the dead as it is so as not to incur the wrath of the gods there are no gods so we will uh, keep building take the silver continue construction feel the wrath of the gods okay apparently there are gods in this game so we don't want to feel the wrath of the gods so we will just don't touch and uh, i hope we don't get the wrath of the gods okay let's do that uh, some of these games give you a moral option and um, if the game said well incur the wrath of the gods and it was just a moral option i won't care but they clearly state there that you will suffer consequences so in that case it's no problem i will not i will choose to not uh incur the consequences whether it be a tsunami or plague or whatever obviously you don't want to have that happen just for a couple of pieces of silver um but yeah now we just basically hope we get food we have two gatherer stations running with three gatherers in total now we just need food and currently we have zero food total number of stored food is zero still all the way so i wonder if the same will happen in this game that happened in my previous game where a couple of my people died 
from not having food, even though I literally built the, the food gatherers as quick as possible. We will just have to see. My uh, happiness is going down. Relative died. Oh, okay, so someone died already. I didn't even notice that. In fact, my, po my, my population went up by one, but okay. Apparently someone died. And then we also need to build decorations for that one um, objective still. So once again like this, what's the difference between a pillar torch and a grand torch and a fire pit? It, it, does it give the same light? Does it give different, um, different bonuses? You know? game doesn't say. There we go, 10, 10 decorations, cost bloody 40 silver, which is like almost half of the money that I had. There I just got a big bonus for some reason. And then we need a herbalist. We have 8 food right now, that's good, so it, at least the, the guys are working. Uh, do we need, well, water for the fields? Okay, no, we don't have any fields right now. Hunting lodge, we can we can do a hun hunting lodge, why not? Okay, 40, 0, 40, 50, 40, 0, 40, 60, 80, 100. So you see, once again, the, the quote-unquote resources in the area aren't even highlighted. You have to swing your mouse around like a retard just to figure out, okay, where's the best area? So over here is the best area, and over here is the best area. So instead of just telling you, like, okay, there are the the best uh, resources, uh, you have to fucking, like, go crazy. Just swing your bloody mouse around. It's just really inefficient once again. So this one is 100 all the way. 100, 100, 100. I think over here we can make one. Okay, now it went down to 90. So is it based on the amount of animals in that area at that specific time or not? Staying 90 even though a... a, a uh, cow or something went out at the top it's staying 90 100 yeah it's definitely based on the animals in the area then and since they don't remain in the area they will move around that this place would go down in um, efficiency eventually um, villagers live and die. After the villagers die, you should assign new workers to replace them. Okay, that's really stupid because eventually your village will obviously be pretty big. You know, eventually you will have a village that is conceivably uh, like across the entire map. You know, like over here and over here and just the entire map and you're literally gonna have to be constantly sweeping across your entire um, map and your entire village just to see that little shitty red icon and then to see okay I need to replace that guy instead of them being replaced automatically that's another thing that makes the game obtuse like you shouldn't have to 
do that, you know, fucking sweep across the map to look at issues with your your village, you know. Like, it's just too much micromanagement. I, I don't like it if the game has too much micromanagement. Obviously, a game like this is pretty much micromanagement, but there's a limit that is acceptable, you know. You can't fucking have, like, a stupid amount of micromanagement that is required. Let's see... Oh, that guy is pretty good. We can take that one as well. Uh, Justice Dilemma. Knowing that he is not like everyone else, he is being beaten by the village bullies while talking crazily in the village square. The duty of these tyrants is to protect the rights and dignity of every citizen, but the public is divided on what to do with this crazy villager. Most of the villagers fed up with how he is behaving want this man to be exiled, while others want the bullies to be suppressed so that they can no longer bully anyone. Okay, a Frigert's family would not be happy. Some of the villagers are unhappy. And then Frigert seeks compensation for the wounds inflicted due to bad commune management and the lack of security. Why are these the only two options? Like, these seem like really stupid options. So, someone is being bullied. So... Your only options are exile the guy who was being bullied, which makes very little fucking sense, or pay the guy who was being bullied. So you can't exile the bullies, you can't punish the bullies. Like, that just seems like a really fucking terrible choice and then they have the audacity to call the quest justice dilemma there's no justice here there's zero justice the bullies are the motherfuckers who are supposed to face justice and yet you aren't given the choice at all obviously the best choice out of these two shitty choices that you are given is to pay 25 but that's a really shitty choice. Like, it's just... Really poor... Scenarios. Really poor quests, overall. There's no good resolution to that quest that is given to you by the developers. I don't know, it just feels stupid. Um, anyway, guys, like... I wanted to try this game again after a year uh, of not uh, playing it. Like I said previously, you can literally go watch my previous video. I think I should also link it in the description below if I remember to do that. But um, like I said in that video at the end, this game needs like two years before it is good, before it is... Um, in a stage where I would say, okay, yeah, sure, I will pay $20 for the game. And that, like, n almost nothing has been fixed since I last played the game. Like, I, I honestly don't know what the developers have been working on. This has been added, like this glitch at the bottom when you go over the water. Uh, that is a new glitch that I haven't seen before. They still haven't fixed the roads. Um... The building still is not good. There's visual glitches like with this uh, interaction that we had over here. I hope it's a visual glitch. I hope it's not an actual glitch, you know. Um, so far, this building hasn't complained that it isn't being covered by the marketplace. So I'm assuming it's just a visual glitch and not an actual glitch. Uh, you still... Don't get any information regarding resources. You don't get any information regarding the degre degradation of 
the resources. It makes absolutely no sense that resources degrade. When you break a rock down from a big rock into a small rock, all of a sudden the rock starts degrading. You can't see the degrading process, so you don't know when resources will start uh, degrading. Uh, you can't click on animals, you can't click on resources to see how much they will give. Um, the game's resolution has no... Like, resolution changing does nothing, literally. I changed the game's resolution from 6K resolution to 720p resolution, which is almost a 10 times degradation, and yet there's no change in the resolution. So the game just defaults to the default resolution of your desktop. It, it goes to your desktop resolution. Here's another guy that has died, so we need to assign someone new over here. That's another thing. Like I said, that is really, really idiotic, and you have to deal with that constantly. You're constantly going to have to keep an eye on your entire base. You're going to have to go through your entire fucking base um, to find those little places of the people that have died. And that building is completely uh, dead. Like, you get no production or benefits from that building until you have assigned a new worker, which is just... It's punishing and um, it's uh, really obtuse. I failed an objective. I don't even see what objective I failed. Um, and then... One thing that really shocked me is that, like, not only, like I said, I thought the game was going to take two years to become playable, and they released it in, in less than a year from the date that I said. Um, not only that, but they raised the price of the game. <laughs> they, they actually had the audacity to raise the price of the game. What, what do you guys want? Like, what, what's the problem? Why is there an exclamation mark on the building? Do I need to go? No, no firewood or coal for heating the house. Okay, well, I, I haven't been told anything regarding firewood or coal, but I, I have wood. Villagers are unhappy. Like, I have wood over there. And I have timber over there. Unless you literally mean that I have to build a... Someone to chop the wood down. Woodshed? Firewood. Okay, so that's something you need. So once again, um, now my, my villagers are angry because they don't have firewood. And yet, obviously, like I said, the game has no tutorial. Literally no tutorial. Apart from move your car camera up and down zoom in and out apart from that the game has literally no tutorial so um, and i said that like a year ago so i really can't see anything that has been improved um i really think the game should have taken longer before being released and then really to my surprise they raised the price of the game by five dollars like i said at the end of my my video that I did a year ago when the game was still in early access, I said, I don't recommend the game for $20. Like, I, I don't see a $20 game here. And that, that was a year ago. And then I said, well, let's see in, in two years or so, when the game hopefully releases, um, maybe then the game will be worth $20. But quite honestly, I can't see what has been improved. And I can't see how the game is worth $20 still, because I literally can't see what has been improved. In fact, some things have been unimproved, like this visual glitch that you get over here, and the visual glitch with the, the thing that we saw over there. Um, the game has gone backwards in some aspects, and I, I can't see what has been improved in this year. And then they're asking $5 more for the game. So, 
Um, my opinion is unchanged and un in fact my opinion is actually slightly lower than what it was when I looked at the game a year ago. Because now the game costs more. And I still can't see how the game has improved since then. Um, so quite honestly my opinion is the same. I would say that if you're looking for a game that's $20 or now actually it's $25. If you're looking for a game like this, just look at something like Farthest Frontier for instance. It costs a little bit more but I would say it's better than this game by a very large margin. Uh, something like Banished is, I think Banished is probably, let me have a look here actually. Uh, I actually have to alt tab now so the game's um, music is gonna drop away obviously but that's one of those things. Uh, banished, let's have a look here, Banished is $20 so actually Banished is a good game and it's $20 I would definitely recommend um, Banished. I've played a bunch of Banished and it's uh, actually pretty good. Uh, Farthest Frontier, you can definitely try that game. Farthest Frontier. Uh, Farthest Frontier is $30, so it's $5 more, but I would definitely say it's a better game than this game. Uh, you can look at some other more indie um, games like uh, Kingdoms and Castles is a game which is not too bad. What's the price of that game? I think I have done a video on Kingdoms and Castles as far as I can remember. And that game is $15. So actually that game is quite a lot cheaper. $10 cheaper than this game. And I can actually recommend Kingdoms and Castles to you. Uh, Kingdoms Reborn is another game that is actually um, not bad. I can definitely recommend it. And that game is $20. So... That game is cheaper than the, than this game, Kingdoms Reborn, and I can definitely recommend that game. So, needless to say, there are multiple games that are cheaper than this game, or the same price as this game, and quite honestly, vastly better than this game, in my opinion. Um, I mean, what more can I say? It, uh, it's just not a good game. I've given it two chances now. Um, like I said, if the developers perhaps took another year, year and a half, maybe even two years from now, uh, just improving the game, then um, it might have been worth $20, perhaps even $25, but there's simply too many things that the game still has not seen improvement on, and in some aspects the game has gone... Um, backwards from where it was in my opinion so needless to say can't recommend the game look at all of the other games that I just mentioned and um, yeah unfortunately this is one that I really can't recommend so I do appreciate the developers sending me a key like a year ago but quite honestly um, I, I can't recommend the game there's simply too many games out there that are better than this game and for the same price price or even lower you, you can get a better game um, so yeah guys that's pretty much it thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time